Okay, for whoever brought their Bible today, I want you to hold it up and say, Word. Word. I like that. I like that. Okay, we're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Chapters 5 through 7 in the book of Matthew are the Sermon on the Mount. Say, Sermon on the Mount. Okay, this is very famous in, in Christian circles because basically you got Jesus, his disciples who are closest to him, but you also have this huge following that starts to take place as Jesus is going to town, from town to town doing miracles and sharing God's word with people. They're freaking out. They're like, this guy's the Messiah that we've been waiting for. He's got to be because no one's ever spoken like he's speaking. When he speaks, he speaks with authority and he's doing miracles on top of that. So all these people are following him. <clears throat> he tells his disciples, let's go up on the side of the hill. I want you to sit everybody down and I'm going to teach them. And so this is what he talks about. <clears throat> Before we jump into that, I just want to read this to you real quick. From Genesis to Revelation, anytime God leads his people through tough times, he gives us the commandment to, to not fear. Okay, I was asked to speak on fear today. I'm gonna to come from a little bit of a different angle. Um, God always tells us, do not fear. I'm with you. It's gonna be okay. You're my people. I love you. Nothing is impossible to you if you just trust me. Unfortunately, I think the dirty little secret in the church today is that we are being bound by fear and anxiety. So that's what I wanna talk about a little bit. Um, I wrote this, America is being devoured by fear and anxiety. Anxiety is now the most common mental illness in America, affecting an estimated 40 million adults, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. And that number is not counting the average warrior. We are in the age of anxiety. I know a lot of you, you, you people are probably struggling financially right now. Maybe you've lost a job. Uh, maybe you've been, uh, uh, maybe you have a marriage that's on the rocks. Whatever the problem might be, we can overcome it. Because Jesus, as he sat down to teach the Sermon on the Mount, points out a couple, a couple points that will get us off our path of walking with God like he wants us to do. One of the things that he points out is religiousness. He says, you know, all these religious leaders who are doing outward, outward deeds to try to win favor with God, that doesn't work. Christianity is an inside out activity. We serve God because God went to the cross for our sins. He created us for his glory. He's awesome. He loves us. We're gonna go to heaven for, for eternity where the streets are made of gold and we're gonna be spending eternity praising God and snowboarding down big slopes and getting in barrels and who knows what Jesus can do. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna have a good time in heaven. But while we're here, Jesus, the Christ, the creator of heaven and earth does not want us to worry. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, I was reading an article in Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, there, there was an article about the uh, Emmy award-winning actor. I think we got a picture of him up, up on the screen. Uh, Heath Ledger, who starred in the movie, uh, the Batman movie, Dark Knight. Profiles started to circle around the same words in, regard, in regards to his life. The words were weary, and restless. In fact, a London Times writer interviewed him on six occasions, said that, that Ledger had worried himself to death. Wow. Can you really do that? Yeah, you can. You can. It might end by, you know, using drugs or whatever, but that worry leads people to do things to try to escape that pain, okay? And, and, and the world tells us all the time, guys, that if we're rich and famous, and everyone adores us, that everything's gonna be good. No worries, right? You know, you're making, making a ton of money and, and everyone loves you. Everything's gonna be fine. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie. There's only one person in the universe who can give you true contentment, joy, peace, purpose, and that's Jesus Christ. He's the only one. The, the earth cannot offer that. So that's why we always see uh, messed up rich people. You know, I don't know if you guys watch like Housewives of Atlanta or the, the Housewives of the Orange County. Me and my wife watch that. I, that's my dirty little secret. <laughs> but these women can't get through a dinner without clawing out each other's eyes. And they've got the money. They've got all that stuff, but they don't have Jesus Christ. And so they're, they're, they're just broken. 
Dr. Charles Mayo of the famous Mayo Clinic wrote, worry affects the circulation, the heart, the glands, and the whole nervous system. He said, I've never met or heard of a man to die of overwork, but I know a lot who have died of worry. I just don't want this to happen to us in the church because we're victorious in Christ. We don't have to let this happen. But the devil has got us off track and he's got us so focused on material stuff or what somebody said about us at work or, you know, we think a lot about our image and Jesus is saying, man, get your eyes on me. I got big things for you. And it's not just all about you. I wanna do bigger things. I mean, what you guys just did for Haiti, like, does that make you guys stoked? It makes me stoked to think about all those people that'll have a tent to sleep in when it's raining outside that wouldn't if you guys wouldn't have stood up and said, we wanna be the hands of Jesus Christ. We wanna reach out and help these people. These are the types of things that God wants to do in this world. But it takes people to get their minds off themselves. And as Jesus starts to preach in Matthew, he's gonna point these things out that we, we're divided when we just focus on self. 